Yeah. If you don't got no sauce, then you, you, you're lost. Mm -hmm. But you can also get lost in the sauce. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back for another episode. Today, I'm going to give you guys a brief overview of what you need to do to make 500 horsepower reliably with a D16 motor. I mean, you could always put a 30 pounds of boost on a Civic and see if you get 500 horsepower for maybe two or three passes. Um, but this is going to be the cheapest way that you can do it on a budget and uh, make it reliable, make some reliable power. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go over everything now. I've been meaning to do this. I've had a lot of you guys hit me up in the comments uh, asking like specific parts and things of that nature and I've failed to do so. So I'm going to put everything in the description, all the parts, everything that's going to be inside there. I'm going to put that down there um, and I'm just going to go ahead and give you guys an overview. So let's go ahead and step in the garage and see what we got. All right, so first thing that you need to do uh, to handle 500 horsepower with these blocks is you got to notch them. Uh, so if you can tell here uh, at the bottom of the block uh, where the crank goes, uh, you'll see where your cylinders are, um, or your cylinder walls are. Uh, you'll see right here, you have to grind this out. Uh, the reason you got to grind these out is because the rods that you're putting in there are going to be super fat. They're going to be way fatter than the stock rods. Um, so it's super important to do so. If you try to put everything back together and you try to start it, you'll realize right away that those pistons are going to go ahead and hit here. Now, you can spend a little bit more money and you can get the Speed Factory no-notch rods, um, but like I said before, this is a budget build, so we want to do this as cheap as possible. Um, but those, I'm not knocking those rods. The Speed Factory rods are good. Uh, they can handle all the same amount of power as the Eagle and the Scat rods. Um, you just got to do a little bit less work, so that's cool. But with this build, we're going with the, the rods that we need to notch. So uh, you can see there, it's all grinded out. Um, make sure make sure you send out your block to the machine shop if it's spun a rod or anything like that. You want to make sure your motor is in pristine shape uh, before you're going to start you know, making all this power. Um, I'm going to go ahead and flip the block around. All right. So a lot of people will you know, talk a lot of trash about block guards and people talk a lot of trash about doing a DEF CON block. If you guys have seen my last video, We've, or one of my videos way back in the day, we uh, did do a DEF CON build and it just really messes up your water pump. And we had some overheating issues uh, with that build. So I'm gonna go back with this good old uh, block guard. I know a lot of people have their feelings about it, but this is a budget build and this is gonna be significant enough to be able to uh, handle this power. Um, so you can really go with any block guard you want as long as it fits in there and it looks even. Uh, you can pick up a block guard for like 30 you know 30 or 50 bucks so go ahead and get that in all you really need to do is just press it press it in it's super super simple uh, you can see this block was was uh resurfaced for us so this is a good block to use um now uh, let's go ahead and get over to some of our internal parts all right so let's start with the crank uh this is a y8 crank a reason I recommend using the Y8 crank is because you'll see there's only one uh, oil port here. Only one. The Z6 one actually has two, uh, which that'll lower your oil pressure, which you definitely do not want with a turbo build. So I recommend going with the Y8 uh, crank. You can go to your local junkyard, pick one up, make sure it's balanced. Uh, if it needs to be polished, go ahead and do that as well. It'll definitely save you a lot of time and money you know you want to make sure this thing runs for a while so uh, with your crank make sure you go with the y8 definitely going to be the better choice uh, of cranks when we're dealing with this you know the single cam you can always go with an aftermarket crank but then again you're going to be spending a whole bunch more money so that's what you need to do with the crank uh, for this 500 horsepower build okay so here are our pistons and our connecting rods uh, these are the scat rods and you can see they are used um, I purchased this block off of uh, the marketplace uh, and a guy spun a rod bearing. So I went ahead and picked these up and I replaced the pistons. Uh, these are just your simple YCP Viterra pistons. Um, I went ahead and went with the 0.5 over. You can go with the standard bore. It uh, doesn't really matter. I just wanted them um, to take a little bit off because there was some imperfections in the block. Uh, so I had it uh, bored a little bit over for us. Uh, so you can go with the one point or the 0.5s. Um, and or standard uh, doesn't really matter won't weaken it uh, that much 
Um, also, you can tell I got these resized because it spun that rod bearing. You want to make sure you have a good, good surface there. So this right here is a scat rod. Uh, this is going to be your cheapest, cheapest way to go. I think if you get them brand new, I think they're about $200 for the rods. Uh, and these pistons, they also come with the rings. You can see all the brand new piston rings. Uh, those are about a hundred bucks. I think I paid a hundred and six dollars like with shipping and everything So you're pretty much looking at three hundred dollars for your pistons and your rods um, So that's pretty good and you can tell I wish I had a stock rod to show you guys the size difference between these and the stock ones But these are way way thicker. So it'll be super nice uh, Super durable, you know for the build. So uh, that's pretty much it for our internals uh, so let's go ahead and go on to our oil pump. Uh, you can see here, this is literally just a stock oil pump. Can't tell from the outside, but on the inside, it's fixed. Uh, you can go ahead and buy yourself one of the uh, race oil pumps, but they're pretty much going to do uh, what I've already done to it. Um, there's another video. I'll go ahead and put it on here now. You guys can take a look at it. Um, that's a video of me shimming the oil pump. Uh, you literally take this part out right here with an Allen key. And you get a washer, you can make yourself a washer, put it inside there, makes that spring stiffer, so that way it's going to raise up your oil pressure. Um, and there's other things that you can do too. Uh, you can port this right here, uh, port this out uh, and make it uh, breathe a little more or flow a little more uh, with oil. Uh, and then you're going to want to make sure you maybe add another shim if you do that, because if you open this up a little bit, that'll also drop your oil pressure. So you want to make sure that you're got good good oil pressure number one thing with turbo builds is you want to make sure you have oil pressure oil pressure is your best friend so always make sure you check your oil i always recommend getting an oil gauge in your car too so that way you can always take a look at it you don't want to rely on that little blinking light in the corner because once you get there that's when it's under 5 psi so the car's oil light that comes on is anything that's under 5 psi and if you're a turbo build and you're under 5 psi you're sol at that point pretty much so make sure you get an oil gauge that's also something that i would highly 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 recommend uh, that you get and that you need for your build so let's go ahead and get on over to the head All right, so you can see here, uh, these are the stock retainers, uh, literally the stock retainers that came with the head. Uh, the only thing here that has changed are these valve springs. The stock valve springs cannot hold up uh, with the RPM that you're going to want to be turning at um, and the amount of power that you're trying to make. So all you need to do is upgrade these valve springs. Uh, you can see by the yellow line on these, uh, these are Brian Crower uh, valve springs. So. Literally, you can pick those up. I think they're about a hundred bucks uh, for the valve springs itself and just use the stock retainers. Um, from what I've been reading and from what people have been saying, it's better to go with the uh, stock uh, retainers on uh, the single cams. They say they're having a lot of issues with the titanium ones. So I went ahead and took that advice and went with these as well. So save yourself some money. I think they're about 80 bucks uh, or more for the retainers. So uh, pretty easy. Uh, this one has also been ported. You can tell in here. Uh, you don't have to port it, but you know it doesn't hurt once you already got it all apart. I mean, I would, I recommend doing it. I just port it so that way it can breathe a little more. Also, you get the head resurfaced. You want to have an even surface meeting up on that motor. So, very, very, very important. All right, and last thing uh, that you need is a cam gear. Get yourself an adjustable cam gear. You definitely don't have to go with the AEM. I just happened to get a good deal with this. Uh, for this, I found it online, so I picked it up. You can literally go with the eBay one. Just make sure you get an adjustable one. That way you can mess with your timing because uh, that's going to be important, especially uh, with a turbo build. Um, now, the uh, only things that are not here uh, that I have ordered and I just have not gotten the mail are the ARP head studs. Um, I'll also put those in the description. You definitely 100% need them. So don't try to go and use the stock head studs because literally once you start making some power around 20 pounds of boost, that head, or sometimes even less boost, the head is just going to start lifting up. So and you'll start burning some coolant. So definitely, definitely, definitely make sure you go with the ARP head studs. Um, I'm going to be using a Felpro head gasket here. I'm not going to be using no cosmetic head gasket. I've seen a lot of people have a lot of success with those and also it's going to save a good bit of money for the build. 
Um, that's the only thing I would say is really in testing. A lot of people uh, have had a lot of success with uh, using the Felpro head gaskets instead of using a cosmetic head gasket. So just make sure the motor is the motor to the head is torqued down uh, perfect uh, to spec. You don't want to go too tight. Um, you don't want to go too loose either. Uh, make sure you look at your specs. I know the ARP head studs are going to be a little tighter uh, than the uh, stock ones, uh, the stock head stud, the head bolts that you put on it. Uh, just make sure you go with the manufacturer spec. Don't try to go off on your own and you know go a little tighter or go a little looser. Just make sure it's right, you know, right exactly where they say. So that's really pretty much it uh, for the motor. Uh, then you can pick yourself up a turbo kit. Um, the GT3282R, uh, that's super cheap. You can get those online for like a hundred bucks. Uh, and that'll be big enough turbo to make you a good amount of power. Um, or you can get a smaller turbo, you know, the normal ones you get with an eBay turbo kit. I'll probably use that for a little bit and I'll just send it to the moon, see how much power I can get out of it or how much boost I can push. Uh, but definitely the GT3282R is what I would highly recommend. Um, that way you just get one turbo, put it on, get as much life out of it, out of it as you can, uh, and just start, you know, pissing people off. People really, really hate these single cams to death. So when you beat somebody with a single cam, they get really upset. So, and I like making people upset. Obviously I drive a Honda and people hate Hondas. We get hated on so much in the community, but honestly, that's what I feed off of. I think the reason I'm still into Hondas is because people hate them literally so much. And they're so much fun and they're so cheap to put together. Honestly, there's nothing better then putting a build together for literally car everything less than three thousand dollars and walking these forty fifty thousand dollar cars it literally just pisses people off when you go to the races and you tell them whatever about your car or don't say nothing and they're sitting here saying oh yeah 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 i got this i got that i got this and you just stay quiet you keep your head down you line up and you walk them so that's the whole point of this build is literally just to piss people off and to do it for super cheap. So a lot of you guys out there don't have a whole bunch of money to spend uh, on a car. You got your own life to deal with. You got other things to pay for. So this is a cheap way to have a whole bunch of fun and piss a lot of people off. So thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. If you don't got no sauce, then you're lost. Mm -hmm. But you can also get lost in the sauce.